Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a simple gingham pattern in Procreate. I'll also show you how to recolor it and how to upload it to Spoonflower to print on fabric, wallpaper and home decor. And if you stick around to the end, I will show you how to turn a simple gingham pattern into a plaid pattern. Gingham and plaid check patterns have made a resurgence in fashion for several reasons. What was once popular often comes back into style with a fresh twist. Plaid and gingham style patterns have found their way back onto the runways and into wardrobes, reflecting a nostalgia for classic and traditional looks. Additionally, designers and brands have reinterpreted plaid patterns in modern and innovative ways, making them relevant to contemporary tastes. The versatility of plaid also plays a role as it can be incorporated into various garments and styles from fashion to formal wear. Furthermore, cultural influences and the desire for authenticity in fashion have contributed to the return of plaid as it carries associations with heritage, authenticity and a sense of belonging. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between plaid and gingham. Whilst plaid and gingham are both popular patterns and textiles, they also have distinct characteristics. Plaid is characterized by intersecting horizontal and vertical bands of color, often forming a checkered or tartan-like pattern. Plaid patterns typically feature multiple colors and variations in stripe width and direction. Traditionally, plaid patterns have roots in Scottish and Celtic cultures and they are associated with kilts and other traditional Scottish attire. Gingham is a checkered pattern that consists of even sized, typically symmetrical checks of two alternating colours, usually white and another colour commonly red, blue or black. Gingham checks are typically small and uniform in size. Unlike plaid, which can feature multiple colours and varied stripe widths, gingham patterns are simpler and typically only involve two colours. So now that we know what the difference between a gingham and a plaid pattern is, let's jump right in and create a simple gingham pattern in Procreate. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a new canvas. So go to the plus icon here. And then I want to create a 3000 by 3000 pixel uh, square. I have it already set up here as I use it all the time. But to create a new one, you can just click on the plus sign here and then type in 3000 by 3000. And I will keep the DPI at 300. Now, if you want to save that in your list of templates or canvases that you set up, you could give it a name here, such as pattern and then you've got it in there for next time and you can just refer back to it. So let's create it. And then we want to turn on the drawing guide. So go up to the actions menu and then click on canvas and then click on and turn on a drawing guide. And then if we click into edit drawing guide and then we want to change the size of the grid. So I'm just going to click on that number there and then type in 1500 which is half the size and it will break it up into four quarters. So let's click on done and you can see probably just barely the grid there. If you want to you can make that a different color. So if we go back in there we can move that across. You can change the color of it. Um, so let's just leave it there. Okay with a gingham check you want to uh, use a lighter color with a darker color. Gingham is, is usually just two colors whereas plaid you can get a bit more creative and have multiple colors. So for this one we're just creating a gingham. So I'm going to choose a light color and a dark color. I'm going to go with the light blue and I'm just going to drag that on, oopsie, drag that on to the canvas to fill the whole canvas. And then let's create another layer on top and this time select a darker color and I'm going to drag that on as well. And then what we need to do is move it down to the bottom half of the canvas. So to do that I'm going to uh, click on the move tool. You want to make sure that magnetics and snapping is turned on as this will help snap it into place. And then let's just drag it down until it snaps. 
and you can see there's an orange line across and an orange line going down which means we're in the right place so we can let go of that by clicking on that move tool again and then let's just duplicate that one and then click on the move tool and this time we're going to rotate it um, 90 degrees like that and then drag it up and then to the right hand side so it covers that right half and then if we go into that layer we want to change the blending mode so if we click on this little n here and then let's select multiply and then you could bump down the opacity now this will depend on what colors you've chosen or just depends on what look you're going for so i'm going to choose around 60 percent i think and there we've got our pattern and this should repeat perfectly so to test that it actually does work i'm going to group all of those and then i'm going to select them all so if i use three fingers and swipe down and then select copy all and then three fingers to swipe down and then select paste what that does is it will paste a merged layer so now you can see they're all merged into one and then if we duplicate that so we've got a total of four and then we want to reduce the size of each of these into the four quadrants so i'm going to use the move tool make sure uniform and snapping is on and just drag them down using those little blue nodes and then let's go to the next one and you can see now it's starting to show you a repeating pattern that is half the size of what it was before and there you go there is your repeating gingham check and let's go and upload that to spoonflower so instead of uploading the uh, smaller scale one i'm going to keep it but i'm going to turn it off and i'm going to turn on the larger scale one and then i'm going to go to the actions bar share and then share image i'm just going to use a jpeg and I'm just going to save the image to my photos. And then let's go to Spoonflower and make sure you're logged in and then click on upload a design. And then let's say choose files and I'm gonna select from my photo library and there it is there. And then add. And then we need to confirm copyright. You need to make sure that this is something that you have created so we are going to click on that to say that we own the rights to that design and then we're ready to upload okay it's now put it into my design library so we need to change some of the properties here i'm also going to make it smaller so if i click on this design size option here and make it smaller i'm going to go quite a bit smaller so that each square is about maybe one to two inches that looks good there and then make sure you click on save changes and then down here we want to give it a name so i'm going to say blue gingham And we need to add some uh, tags, which are really important. Try and use all 13 if you can. So for this, I'm going to put maybe a check. Gingham. Blue. Maybe blender as it's a blender pattern. Uh, maybe coordinate kind of as a coordinate pattern and so on you can go on but make sure you try and add as many as you can and then if we go to my design my shop sorry I'm going to click on new and we can see that there and I'm going to click on there and we can go and see what it looks like on various products and there we go it looks pretty good it's pretty good on a cushion and on the bed and you can go down here and have a look at the rest of the items as well so that's the easy way to get a gingham style pattern onto a product or fabric or wallpaper 
Now, if you want to build a career in surface pattern design, I highly recommend looking into my course where I take you through the creative, the technical and the business side of the industry. This, this course is for those who are beginners in surface pattern design, but also for those that have already started a career in surface pattern design, but really want to um, knuckle down and make their patterns better and actually get licenses. So I step you through in this self-paced six module course on how to make technical repeats in Procreate, in Photoshop and Illustrator. And I think I'm the only course out there that does that. So I highly recommend having a look if you're interested in learning the ins and outs of surface pattern design. And now let's get back to the tutorial and learn how to recolor our gingham pattern. Now you may want to create a couple of uh, colorways so it's really easy to do. Just come back into your pattern and I'm going to go into my original one here. Now you want to turn on the alpha lock which you can do by clicking on it and then selecting alpha lock or you can also just use two fingers to swipe it to the right. So let's just turn them on for each of those layers. And then on the first one, let's see, let's go and select another color. Uh, maybe we'll go with this one here. And then if I just select it and then fill layer. And then let's do the same for the others with a um, this pink one. And fill it. And then the third layer, let's fill that. And we shouldn't have to adjust anything else. You might want to adjust the opacity a little bit. Um, but that's up to you and how you want that design to look. And so now we've easily got another colorway. I recommend just setting one of these up and just keep reusing it with different colors that match the pattern collection that you might be creating because they do make really good blenders um, and they're really easy to do. Okay, now you, I'm going to show you how to create a simple plaid pattern. You may remember at the beginning of the video I showed you the difference between a gingham and a plaid. So the plaid has different size stripes and it also has different colours. So to do that, let's just grab the second layer here which is this horizontal stripe and I'm going to select the move tool and I'm going to reduce the size. And then I want to duplicate that and then just drag it up and then reduce the size again. And then I'm just going to keep doing that up the canvas so that I have a bunch of different sizes to fill it up. Just make sure you don't go to the top edge if you've got this one at the bottom edge as you don't want them bumping into each other when it repeats. Also make sure that it touches both sides. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for that and then I'm going to do the same for the vertical one here. So this is this layer here. I'm going to, sorry, resize it first and then duplicate it, drag it across. Oops, got two selected there. Let's drag that one across and resize. And we just repeat that across. Okay, and now we want to add some different colors to it. Now if you go into my layers, you can see that the um, layers all have a checkered mark in the background of them. That means that the alpha lock is turned on, which makes it really easy to color. Now if that isn't turned on, you basically just click on it and click on alpha lock, or you can do two fingers uh, to swipe into the right and that will turn it on and off as well. But I find that a bit um, sticky sometimes, so I just click it and turn it on. And then if you select a layer and you have a color here, you can just select it and then click on fill layer. So I'm going to do that for a few of these just to mix it up.
Okay, I'm happy with that. And then the last thing you want to do is test it to make sure that it repeats. So I'm going to close that group, turn off the background layer, and then use three fingers to swipe down, copy all, three fingers to swipe down, and then paste. And then we've got a flattened layer there, so we can turn off that original one. And let's duplicate that, so we've got four copies. And then we want to reduce them down to the four quadrants. And there I can see that I haven't matched up some of these stripes, so I have to go back and fix that. So let's just merge those and delete it and start again. And I can see here I missed it, I didn't have them right up against the edge, but we can fix that. So I'm just going to select one and then just drag it out till it hits the bottom. And that looks a bit better. So let's try that again. Copy all and paste. And then duplicate that. And then reduce them to the corners, to the quadrants. Yep, and still there's one there. So let me quickly fix that up as well. As you can see, it is a process and um, it's important to do this check so that it does work. Okay, hopefully I got it working this time. So let's duplicate those and reduce them down. And that is much better. I'm just going to turn off the drawing guide as well. And that is our played pattern. And that's it everyone. I hope you made it through the tutorial. If you do have a question, just pop it down below and I will try and answer it for you. And if you want to learn how to create some other patterns in Procreate, I highly recommend having a look at both of these tutorials that I have here on the channel. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe so that you do get those notifications when I do post another video. Thanks again. See you later creative people.